Now, I usually do it this way. And they go, wow, that's like magic. Any instrument is difficult. So I'm always telling my students, anything worth doing in life is going to be difficult at times. But if you get good at it, it becomes fun. So put in the hard work. And whether it's a foreign language or calculus or a musical instrument, what looks just impossible at first, that blur, that fog begins to clear and you go, oh, I get it. And that understanding brings such excitement. And so once you've worked hard and committed yourself to learning something, it pays off every time. The studies show very clearly that, um, that during the school day, in an art class, kids are accessing their right brain. In math and English, they're accessing their left brain. But only in music class do both hemispheres of the brain have to talk to each other. And as a kid struggling through some finger passage or learning something new, literally I can just see, as it were, their halves of their brains trying to talk to each other. And that corpus callosum, that bridge between the two hemispheres, gets stronger and stronger and healthier as those two hemispheres have to talk to each other. Because music is the only time in their day when both hemispheres talk to each other. But because of that, musicians, especially those who practice, who, who use muscle movement and their ears and their voices, all those things put together make their brains so much healthier, stronger, more efficient. And study after study over the last 50, 60 years have shown that students who are involved in music, especially music practice, are better at problem solving, organizational skills, all sorts of things that in school make a difference. Their, bra Their brains just work more effectively. And in my 37, 38 years of teaching, my kids involved in music are usually at the top of the class in other subjects. They're often the student leaders. They're often the best athletes. So this, the research really shows that music, especially music practice, makes you smarter. If they've had piano for two, three, four years, they're gonna pick up instruments just like that. So I would tell every parent, please get your, your children on piano lessons as soon as you can. So at this time, let's go on a brief tour of our music department so you can see what happens in each classroom. I teach handbells here, and Mr. Brando teaches tone chimes. So these are the tone chimes. These are the handbells. Incredibly challenging and such a great way to teach teamwork. And from the handbell room, let's go to the band room. We have the percussion set up at all times. This week in my grade five classes, it was demonstrating the whole recorder family. And then we're demonstrating all the band instruments so they can choose what instrument they want to play. Let's head to the orchestra room. Our orchestra this year has eight violins, three violas, four cellos, and two basses. So, great group, lots of fun, some really great players. There's only room for fitting within the group and blending your sound in with everybody else. So I love the fact that in music, every kid has to realize they're responsible to the rest of their team to make us all look good because we're only as strong as our weakest links. Music encourages us to be humble, to put our egos aside, and to me that's a huge one. There's no room for ego in real music. My advice to parents would be that they see music as an important component, not only to becoming better students and learning better in every other class, but also to learning to be um, partners, team members, and setting our egos aside and saying, 
I may be better than them, but my group will only sound as good as I help the kid below me be. If they're weaker, then I need to help them be stronger. Because no matter how good I am, I'm not gonna sound as good if the kids below me in my section don't sound good. And it helps us work together to build everybody up to a higher level. There's very few places in life we do that.